This week in startups is brought to you by HostGator, your one-stop shop to getting your business online. Your domain name, website, website design, and even your marketing. HostGator has got you covered. Have questions? Their team is there 24-7 via chat, phone, and email to help you. Start today with 30% off with coupon code TWIST. And Lead Genius. Higher quality leads and customized customer data at scale. Schedule a free demo at leadgenius.com forward slash twist. Today on the program, Ben Nader, who is the CEO and founder of one of my favorite investments. It's called Butterfly. They're building a camera, a home security system that's even better than the awesome drop cam, which I'm a huge fan of. And their product is now on Indiegogo today. And it's going to talk about how much money it takes, it's a million dollars or more, to uh, start one of these companies and how much it costs to do an Indiegogo. He's a really smart, smart cat, and it's all about hardware startups and a great product and how to beat an incumbent. Amazing episode. Stick with us. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey everybody, hey everybody, welcome to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis, and this is the show where we talk to the startup founders who are changing the world, one product or service at a time. I am an angel investor, have been so for five years, have invested in 150 companies, and I invest in those companies with the hope, the earnest hope, that 70% fail. Brutally. Because if I'm investing in companies that have a 100% chance of success, they're not going to be innovative at all. I'm looking for companies that are aggressively going after markets with very unique products, which means high risk, but high risk, high reward, obviously. And so when I place my bets, I tell every entrepreneur, listen, we're going into this relationship with the understanding that the majority outcome is failure and that we all have to be okay with that because if we succeed, hopefully it'll be a return that is greater than one to one. Hopefully the return is 10, 20, 50, 100x to one. And in fact, every time I look at an investment, I force myself and the entrepreneur who I'm working with to say, hey, at this valuation, if it's a $4 million valuation, how do we return 50x? In other words, how do we increase the value of this $4 million enterprise by 50 times? Four times five is 20 times 10 is 200 million. So if somebody comes to me with a $4 million valuation, I say, hey, how can we make this a $200 million company? If somebody comes to me with a $10 million valuation, I say, how do we make it a $500 million company, also known as a half billion? If somebody comes to me with a company with a $20 million valuation, I say, how does this company become worth a billion? That's the name of the game. That's how entrepreneurship works. That's high stakes, Silicon Valley, technology industry, 2015, angel investing and entrepreneurship. It's not for everyone. And if you can't build a great product on your own and get that product to market before you have angel investors, you're probably not going to get it done in 2015. The market has changed. The benchmark has gone up. You have to clear much higher hurdles than you ever did before. And today on the program, I have a founder who's clearing those hurdles. His name is Ben. I met him over a year ago. Just super impressive guy. I realized like, He's going to win, maybe not at this company, but in life he's going to win. He's going to hit it if he keeps swinging that bat. And his first swing at bat is an amazing product called Butterfly, which I've invested in and my Angelo Syndicate has invested in. And some friends of mine are investing in now. I don't want to get into any general solicitation as some salacious publication was accusing me of. But I'm bullish on the company, and that's it. If I invest in a company, my job is to support them relentlessly, and hey, I know majority of these things fail. If you want to invest in startups, get comfortable with an 80% failure rate because that's pretty realistic, 70, 80% failure rate, and get ready for one or two to return just your money back. And then hopefully, if you have great deal access and a lot of patience and you invest in 50 or 100 companies, maybe, maybe one out of 10, maybe one out of 20, will return disproportionately and pay back for those other losses and get you ahead of the game. Welcome to the program, Ben Thank Nader. you very much for having me. Thanks. All right, Ben, we met when? 
Uh, almost a year ago, August 2014. August 2014, we met. You had an idea for a product. Yes. And I immediately said, wow, this is a great idea. Tell the audience what that product is. Absolutely. Thank you. So, so Butterfly is a software company, consumer electronics, and we're playing in the space of connected home, smart home. Our, uh, our, the problem we solve for consumer is all about safety, security, surveillance. And our first product is Butterfly Camera. Mm. It's a smart camera that, uh, that you use for basically home monitoring, home surveillance. Our customers wanted to use it for, it's pretty divided evenly for simple home security to some kids and baby monitoring to pet monitoring. Then it gets some other applications, elderly care and all that. But our main focus is a simple peace of mind, simple home security. Got it. So I looked at the product, and I, of course, asked you the question that every single investor and consumer asks when they see you making a home uh, camera. Mm -hmm. How is it different than the 800-pound gorilla yes. bought by Google known as Dropcam, which I have three of, yes, and I love, yes, by the way. Yes, yes. Yes, actually, we, we like what those guys have done and the product they've delivered. Actually, they've I've been an Uber user of that product and some of the other solutions in the market. So how are we different? That is the best product in the market, correct? T today, I, I believe so, yes. Yep. Today, I believe so, yes. So how are we better and how are we different from them? I think we're different and better. And uh, so first and foremost is about a technology called ABR. ABR. ABR, Activity Based Recording. Got it's it. Patent pending. What it is, what's the key here, the differentiation is there's a lot of cameras that can do 24 7 surveillance. Got it. What the idea is right now is the content. If can you start making sense of the video that the camera sees? Ah. And depending on what it sees in front of it, can it do, can it act, behave differently? Hmm. So a surveillance camera, when it was at airport security, made sense to just record 24-7. But if you're going to take one of these cameras and bring it to your home, first thing you got to do is simplify it from all that complex uh, setup that Dropcam did compared to some of the other existing solutions. Right. You just plug then, it in and it generally works. Generally works, yes. But then you still got this 24-7 recording. I think that made sense when you, need a home, when you need a security camera at an airport, but it doesn't make sense if you have it at home. So what if you could put some intelligence inside that camera that can start recognize and learn what's going on in its field of view and behave differently? Okay. Let me give you some examples. For example, can it recognize it's me coming home okay. and shut off and give me the privacy right. or the homeowners coming home and give them privacy? Can it recognize that this home has a pet, has a dog, and every time the dog moves around the, in front of the camera, it's not an alert, it's not a motion alert, but... For example, if the home has a dog, it can recognize if there's a sound of a dog barking for an extended period of time, then there's something going on. Let me alert the, the home Got owners. It. So, so putting that in uh, smarts and analytics inside the camera. Got it. And so it has a server or it has a, a processor a, a in computer, the camera. A computer, basically. A very advanced computer with coprocessors, machine vision algorithm, and uh, of course there's imaging that, that's, that's collecting a video and, and running algorithm on it. And then there's some external sensors that are mm. non-video. They're right here underneath in this capsule looking shape yeah. that they complement the video sensor knowledge and they can recognize what are those around. sensors what, what, what can they sense one of them can recognize heat from a distance mm. i'm not talking about a temperature sensor it can tell you what's the temperature of this device it can tell you in its field it has a similar field of view and it can tell from a distance there is a heat going on there right and so for example so that can be used for detecting humans and pets live being we in the infrared domain we, we uh, dissipate heat or some electronic at home uh, let's say or some non electric some appliances at home let's say like an oven is left on or a coffee maker machine is mm -hmm. left on and they're they're hotter than when they're t left off right so combine that with the video analytics and video algorithm now you can start making sense of what's going on around you so instead of just getting an alert on my drop cam like i do that there was motion in my exactly. entryway or motion in my kitchen it might say taurus and fondue or like your dogs are in your entryway yeah. and right. they're barking Exactly. Which is what they do when they want to go out. Exactly. So I can get a text message or an alert on my phone through that. Or will it know faces? So it, it, it can recognize, fa it detects faces. Got it. And then we're working on some stuff to, to group the faces together and similar faces and give you some, some really cool information about what's going on with different faces in, in, your, in, your, in your home. Okay, so if you succeed with that portion of the facial recognition, mm -hmm. what might some applications 
of a facial recognition camera in your home or office? What, what, because I can think of a hundred, but I'm curious yeah. as a founder, what you've been thinking about or hearing from your customer base. Sure. It's, it's who comes in and out of your home, Got it. whether it's being the, 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 okay, my, my wife is at home and the, the kids are arrive home. Let's yeah. say the kids come at home at around two or three and then the parents arrive at five or six. Did the kids are on, came home around the three, three thirty, and is there unrecognized face that came home with them that we don't recognize a brand ah. new face? So, so your, you know, little Johnny is home yes. with three other f undetected faces. You know, like, Brand oh, wait a second. Yes. My son just brought home three other kids to the house or something. I exactly. got to pay more attention to that alert. Unrecognized face in exactly. house. Exactly. Exactly. It's this simple peace of mind. I want to know what's going on somewhere. I'm not present. And we enable that in a very simple, intuitive way through your mobile phone. All right. Now, one other major differentiator with the product is that it has a massive battery pack in it mm -hmm. uh, and massive storage from what I understand and that's why it's a little bit larger than other ones. When we get back from commercial break I want to find out from you why you chose to put a huge battery pack in there and why you chose to put huge storage in there when we get back with Butterfly on This Week in Startups. <music> Let me stop for a moment and thank our friends at HostGator. Uh, they've really done a great job for us. You know, We have tremendous, tremendous issues as an organization doing podcasts, hundreds of them, a uh, hundred or four a year, in fact, and they really came to our rescue and helped us hosting this week in startups. And the new website is up and it is gorgeous. Uh, HostGator is, I just had a call with the founder and boy, are they crushing it. It's a one-stop shop for your online business and it's super quick to set up your site via their website. One click, WordPress, one, one click WordPress installs, drag and drop builders, easily set up your custom email addresses, and they do SEO, PPC, and all those kind of services for you in-house, and they guide you through everything step by step. It's very clearly explained with screenshots and all that kind of stuff, uh, and it's super reliable and affordable. That's one of the great things, 24-hour, 365 day a year support by chat, phone, email, whatever you want to do, and they're going to respond within two hours, it's guaranteed. And as you grow, you can seamlessly transfer from their $4 a month shared hosting account to VPS and dedicated service, servers, et cetera. The first 100 Twist listeners to sign up using the promo code TWIST25 will receive one year of HostGator hatchling package for only $25, that's twist 25. And that includes tons of disk space, unmetered bandwidth, MySQL databases, multiple custom email accounts, et cetera. Don't worry if you aren't one of the first, you can still save 30% on any package using the promo code twist. So try twist 25 first, and then if you don't get in, use twist. Thanks again to HostGator. They've really uh, helped us get the new website up and running and all of our RSS and enclosures working. Just a great team over there. Really high quality stuff. They've got a great reputation. So thanks, HostGator. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week in startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis. You can follow me on the Twitter at Jason today on the program. Ben Nader, who I am an investor in, a proud investor in for those crazy publications that are claiming that I am generally soliciting and don't know the definition of the word. I am soliciting people to buy Butterfly. I want everybody to go to getbutterfly, F-L-E-Y-E, -E, uh, dot com, and I want you to pre-order it because I believe in the product, and their Indiegogo campaign launches today, today being Tuesday, August 25th, and it's 199 for the first 100 units, which is $60 off the retail price, which will be $259. Right. And as I've said, this product is the love child of GoPro and Dropcam oh. because it has a huge battery in it. It does. How yes. long does the battery last if it's turned on mm -hmm. and actually recording video? Mm -hmm. And how long does it last in standby mode? What, what can we expect from this battery? How, how is that battery compared to, say, an iPhone 6 battery or something? Compared to iPhone 6, it's about five, six times bigger. Okay. <coughs> okay, so that was a big design decision, right? That's a yeah. cost. Those batteries cost money. Sure. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And uh, it's weight and size. So why did sure. you put all this battery? Because I know sure. with my drop cam, 
Yeah. There's no battery in it. I, yeah. I, the power goes off, the drop cam goes off. Right. So let me explain how it all started. Yeah, so yeah. it's really started from my personal frustration of I wanted to set up drop cams or, or light cameras like that in my in my garage, for example, mm. for simple security, keep an eye, keeping an eye on things I have there. And I realized there was no outlet available mm -hmm. around where I wanted to mount this. And I thought, well, people have been making the point and shoot cameras for years that are, uh, that are battery operated. Why nobody has made a surveillance or monitoring camera with extended battery life? Then I can be flexible. I can put it in that corner, in this corner. I can move it around by my front door if I'm the weekend I'm out of town and just move it around if I want to. So that was the, really the beginning of this. And then we start testing this with people, with our, with our early adopter customer, when we had this in a 3D printed, much uglier looking shape than this. But Yeah, the first one I saw was 3D printed and exactly, ugly. Exactly, exactly. But uh, the cordless part was one of the first things we worked on and we got it working. People loved it. It wasn't even they want to put it in a garage. They wanted, if it was kids or pets monitoring, the kids move around throughout the day. They're playing in the backyard, they're playing in the basement. Uh, they want to just And you might not around. have 12 different exactly. drop cams and you may not want to unplug them and run extension cords. Okay. Often I hear of the babysitter is coming to keep an eye on the kids. They just tell the babysitter to, to take the camera with you. You're going to play with the kids in the living room. You're going to take the kids downstairs to, to the kitchen. Ah, take so it with brilliant. You. Just put it there. Right. You know? If it was a wire and you got to go hook it up and program it again downstairs, it's too much work. Or right. take it in the backyard when kids are playing in the backyard, the adults want to be in the house. They can just keep an eye on, on them through with the, with the app. They just put so it So how long app. does that, like, you know, let's call it a six-pack of iPhone batteries last yeah. when it's actively recording? Mm -hmm. And then how much would it last if it was you know, in my summer home mm -hmm. and recording you know, a raccoon every, uh, every morning, but that's it? Right, so if actively you force it to stream 24-7 and record, it's about two days, but... Wow. Um, yeah, so you so could <laughs> put it outside, like, I could point it outside my window or leave it on my dash. Yeah. I could put it on my dashboard here in the Tenderloin and record for two days of the insanity going on on Turk Street? You can, yes, yes, wow. yes, yes. But, I mean, the... the, the you might just do that. <laughs> the other part of differentiation, is because that is smart, can tell you if there is it's empty, nothing is happening, ah. it's going to put itself in a standby mode, ah. and it's going to save you more battery life. So what we come up with based on testing homes, and when homes there's kids and pets that are moving around a lot, on average we get somewhere between 10 days to two weeks of battery life. Mm. If the use case is a garage or a basement that's less trapped, Traffic. Sometimes the use case goes like to three weeks or a little bit more. Garages, people just come in and out and get in, get out, and you just want those clips of when something happens. You know what I want this for? When I go on vacation, yeah, and I usually do like a VRBO, which is you know similar oh, to yeah. like an Airbnb, Airbnb yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's a little bit like more like uh, bigger homes. Airbnb is usually a couch or a room. This mm -hmm. is like the whole house. Mm -hmm. um, I have no security at those houses, and I know a thousand people have the keys. There's no alarm, and I would like mm -hmm. to put this on the shelf discreetly. And know if anybody comes into the home and get an out. alert on my phone while I'm out, if I'm in Hawaii or I'm, you know, yeah. in San Diego, wherever I'm doing this VRBO, I'd like to know what's going on in my hotel room or whatever. And I just throw it up on the shelf and covertly nobody would know, but I have a home security camera on in, the go with you, yeah. On the go with me. That's and because right. it doesn't need to be plugged in, I can put it somewhere like on the top shelf. Exactly, exactly. The hot uh, multiple of our customers have asked about using like this hotel room. They're Security. going on a business trip. Yeah, they know they know somebody comes in that room when they're gone during the day. Yeah, and generally it's okay, but. Once in a while something happened, you just want to have that peace of mind that right. if something happened, I have recording of it, you know, right. what happened when people came into my room to do my bed or whatever, they come and clean yeah. the room. So. so it's got a huge battery, mm -hmm. which adds a little bit to the cost. Mm -hmm. It's 1080p, is that it's right? It's 1080p. It's full HD, yes, yes. And it records to the cloud just like Dropcam. Yes. And it has built-in storage. So oh, really? Yeah. So, so explain why you have built, because Dropcam yeah. has no storage. <clears throat> That's right. So if the power goes out or, or the, the internet, internet goes is, out, the internet goes out, you got nothing. That's right. right. So if you were going to rob somebody's house with three Dropcams in it, <laughs> if you cut out their internet, the, the Dropcam is not working. Nothing will be recorded. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Just plain and simple. Mm -hmm. But if you had butterflies and somebody cut the internet out, mm -hmm. the butterflies would be recording, and when Wi-Fi came back on... It will automatically sync. Yeah. yeah. So this again started with a personal personal problem that I had. So in my garage use case, I finally, you know, I'm being a technical savvy guy, electrical engineer. I run the extension cord and run the wires, got it powered onto where I want it. Then I realized the internet just goes in and out, and I have, and I end up every time I check my storage, which I signed up for storage on on the drop cam, I have all these missing pieces of video. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, so we're building all these smarts can detect what's going on around it on the video analytics. Can we build some smart 
large to, to, connect, uh, to detect its wireless, uh, wireless connectivity mm -hmm. and make a decision. If the wireless is not available or it's weak, let's say people are streaming Netflix and there's its apartment building with everybody using the same Wi-Fi network, it will automatically record videos internally. Mm -hmm. And then at 2 a.m. when the internet is wide open or whenever the internet came available, it will store all of its Wi-Fi settings just like an iPhone. When it comes to the proximity of a sure. Wi-Fi, it will just automatically sync everything to the cloud. Got it. So it's a built-in backup system, built-in storage inside the product. How much storage is it? It's a 16 gig drive. So gig. depending on what, by default, it's full HD, 1080p. It's about 11 hours, 10 to 11 hours of Amazing. recording without HD. If you lower the, you can always lower the quality. You can even get extended storage. Got it. Now, and that's something you can't do on a drop cam is change the resolution. What is the resolution on my drop cam? Because I noticed it's kind of grainy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like 1080p to me, it's, what is it? It's uh, it's 720p, the Dropcam Pro is 720. 720, yes. but they don't do 1080p because they're recording 100% of the information to the cloud, right? That's right, that's right. You're so only recording... When things happen. So that's when things ABR, happen, so you're more happen. efficient, therefore you get to do a higher resolution. That's right, that's right. When you look at the encryption, so consumers understand the video resolution, HD, full HD, 720p, as a 1080p, but what's really important is the bit rate and how heavily you're compressing. Mm -hmm. Because they're streaming 24 seven and because they have to compensate for all sort of internet connections across America, for example, they have to heavily compress the video to be con con continues to have internet connection. So that means the video quality at the end of the day is not, is not even though it's 720p, there are some issues there. So when you just go bits by, uh, when you have the analytics and the smarts in the camera and the camera can make a decision, I don't need to stream seven hours a day the empty living room, there's nobody at home, but when somebody came in, that five minutes, I'm gonna record that, then you can go much higher resolution and you can take your time and up upload that at a, at a higher quality. And when you have higher quality video, you can do more analytics. Ah, right. The facial recognition gets better. Facial recognition All right. objects. Yeah. When we get back from this commercial break, I want Ben to explain to us what it takes to launch a hardware company in 2015, which is to say, how much money do you need to raise to get to market? How much money do you need to raise in a Kickstarter? How do you price your product to have a profit margin? How much do you need to get in purchase orders? What do angel investors and VCs expect? Just really open kimono, discuss everything about what it takes to fund a hardware startup when we get back from this commercial break. And can we play your video, the new video? Absolutely. absolutely. All right. So we'll play the new video when we get back on This Week in Startups. Hey, everybody. Let me take a moment to tell you about Lead Genius. This is a great company. I love it so much because we use it here at launch. We have made tens of thousands of dollars using, in profit, using this product. And I love it so much that I invested. What is Lead Genius? Lead Genius allows you to, very simply, augment and make your sales team bionic by having them get better leads, more leads, reactivating leads, and taking the bottom third of what salespeople do and hate and outsourcing it. Listen, your sales executives, these high-priced people who you're paying in some cases, six figures, some cases, you know, even higher, they don't want to sit there all day and put their data into their CRM system, their customer relationship management system. They don't want to hunt and peck for leads on LinkedIn and AngelList and Crunchbase. They don't want to do all that work. And that work is repetitive, and that work is hard, it's tedious, and there's a certain group of people out there who love doing it. And there's software and technology you can apply to that process that makes it more efficient. Well, that's what Lead Genius has done. And so for low, low hundreds to low thousands of dollars a month, you can create essentially a team that goes and looks at your CRM, and then they say, hey, you talk to these three people at the organization, we're going to update their information, and we're going to reactivate those leads. And they did this for us, and they reactivated a lead that wound up spending tens of thousands of dollars with us at one of our events. You can import uh, all of this directly into your CRM or your marketing automation software. In other words, you can give them a login to your system. They're trustworthy. They have NDAs, all that stuff in place, and they can take these um, high-value leads and get them into your system. Stripe uses it. Webly uses it. Signify uses it. We use it. Go to leadgenius.com slash twist and get a free review and audit of your sales process. So they'll look at your entire sales process and say, hey, your lead gen could be optimized this way. Your opening email is lame. I would delete it immediately. Here's how you can make your opening email, your opening salvo better. Here's what a drip campaign is. Here's how to do it. They're going to do that audit for people who are fans of This Week in Startups for free. 
That's leadgenius.com slash twist. If you're in the mode at your startup or medium-sized company or even big company of starting to sell, you have to use Lead Genius. I'm telling you that you'll spend a small amount of money and you'll get a giant return. Um, so um, they'll do this free calibration um, with 10 high leads for free as well. They're going to get you 10 really high leads for free. Go ahead and go to leadgenius.com slash twist. High quality leads, better reporting, automation, segmentation. They do all this research. You know, it's just low quality leads are a waste of time. You need the high quality leads. You need those Glen Gary, Glen Ross leads. You need the good ones. And that's what Lead Genius does. That's why I invested in the company. And that's why... I pay the company to help my, uh, my sales team. All right, let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. Today on the program, Ben Nader. He is Ben Nader, N-A-D-E-R, underscore, on the Twitter. <laughs> uh, I got there late. And uh, he is the CEO and founder of Butterfly, which is Butter, F-L-E-Y-E. And you can follow them on Twitter, Butterfly. C-A-M, and you can get the butterfly at getbutterfly.com, getbutterflye.com, and their Indiegogo launches today, $199 for the first 300 units, which is 300 off the retail price. Full disclosure, I am a proud investor in the company. I'll tell you, I wanted to invest in the company because I met you, mm -hmm. and you had a tremendous background, and you had put, I think, 30 or 40 grand of your own Lots money into the product. Yeah, that's right. That's What's right. your background? Because I was super impressed. Thank you. So, uh, technical founder, so I studied electrical engineering. The last eight, nine years before starting Butterfly, I was working for uh, leading tech companies uh, in semiconductor hardware in, in uh, Silicon Valley. Including? Uh, including Texas Instruments. So I started right. as an engineer, moved to product management and business management at Texas Instruments. So what are you, Instruments. a 30-year-old guy? I don't know your age. Yeah, early 30s. Yes, early 31. 30s. Yes. 31. That's right. Um, so you put in I put a in decade of work. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. At Texas Instrument, I specifically managed, um, I was the product manager for the video chipset product line. Uh -huh. So these are the components that go inside cameras from GoPro to, to point and shoot camera to surveillance yeah. camera. So I felt like I understand and, and, I, and I spent a lot of time in Asia with all the manufacturers and ODMs of yeah. the world and to figure out what it takes to build one of these. Mm -hmm. And I kind of see where the technology was going. So that's how I Yeah, thought. that made it easier for me to make the bet on you and Butterfly because I just thought, wow, you're motivated you put 40k of your own money in and you've got the pedigree you, you understand how the chain works and how to build this stuff so that takes out a lot of risk for me but hardware companies are still a massive amount of risk what does it take to actually get a product like this which is very sophisticated and I would say more sophisticated certainly on a feature by feature basis it's much more sophisticated than say the latest drop cam what does it take to get that product to market, what we, what will you have spent in total yeah. when, you know, people see this on the shelves at, you know, some great technology store? I think I think around two million dollar. Two million bucks. And twelve months to eighteen months, if mm -hmm. you know what you're doing from the beginning. Right. If you have to restart over, that's that's definitely extends. Yeah. I think around two, maybe two and a half, maybe one and a half if you're super lean. So right around two million dollars. What will it wind up have costing Butterfly? Do you estimate? Right around that time. Right, right around, around two million. Right around two million. Yeah. To get yeah. to Christmas this year. To be, yep, yeah, to be on. And eighteen months. Yes, yes, a little shorter than that. Yeah. So I, I have to say, I'm phenomenally impressed at how capital efficient you've been. Thank you. But this is building hardware is a little bit scary, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I, I love doing it because. I love things you can physically touch and feel and play mm -hmm. with it, and, and it's a physical device you can put on a book, we can put it on a retail store, like the big names like Sony's and Apple of the world sell a product. Now we get to have the similar product sit on the shelf next to their product. Let me ask you a candid question. You went sure. to the market um, and met with investors over the past 18 months with this product, maybe even longer when you were in pre-production, and you're going up against Dropcam, and they were bought by... Google, and they hired Tony Fidel, and they made a part of Nest. It seems like an impossible person to beat. What was the reaction of investors outside of myself to what you were doing? What, what did they tell you when they said no? Because the overwhelming majority of investors will tell a founder no. What was it like, and how did you get through it? And, and what are they? And has it changed over yeah. the last eighteen months? I don't know if you know this, but Jason. But before meeting you, I went through seventy-four no's. You were the number seventy-five. In really? Which I talked to you. I have okay. an Excel sheet. I literally would write them down and would write them down. And I, so I'm the idiot. 
No. I'm the first guy to say yes. <laughs> 74 people say no. No, but no, I'm no. the one who says yes. No, 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 no. Actually, there were some smaller checks between the yeah, rounds. Yeah. So when we met you, we had a little bit of money. We raised a yeah. few different checks here So and a couple there. of guys. You came in, obviously, and yeah. lead, led the round. But yeah, so I went through 74 no's before we met. Mm. And all sort of different questions. You know, I learned a lot about the angel investing and how it goes and, and the time we spent together and how you asked me a lot of questions. I remember our first meeting, we, there was no person. I don't know if you remember there was no yeah. presentation deck. We yeah. would just talked. And yeah. the presentation deck was like on a third meeting or yeah. send it over like to you and Bryce, I think. Yeah. And so much of it was on a personal level and what have I done, the sacrifices I've made and how committed I am. Uh, and I noticed when I talked to some other angel investors, maybe the ones, uh, some, a lot of them, they now I have this radar for me and that what's a, a, what I think of a really good angel investor and what not. The one thing they say, and it's sort of a red flag for me, what if this, what if that? The, the non savvy would say, well, what if this happens? What if Google decides to give away Dropcam for free? What if the world, you know, there's an earthquake tomorrow and there's this, there's a million what ifs and that's right. why you take a risk, right? So the, and then I found that the ones that, uh, that, are, uh, that are really experienced and, and uh, ex definitely learned it from working with you is you spend a lot of time getting to know the founder, the founding team, the people that are around you at that stage and how much execution have you done and can you execute and deliver this, you know? There is risk, that obviously you're at early stage, you can't de-risk the whole thing, you know? But we're incredibly committed, we are 200% focused. This is, I tell the team, it's the opportunity is in front of us. It's not easy, but it's straightforward. We don't have to go invent this unknown market. People want, Dropcam has proven that people want this simple. How many Dropcams have been sold? Is there a number out there? The is it millions? Are, uh, it's in millions, yeah. Low millions? Not I tens. think it's in single digit. Yeah, this year the forecast for 2015 forecast for total number of consumer IP cameras, this from, from the one drop cams to the one you can buy as a kit at like a Costco, is 15 million worldwide. Only 15, one five. It's, it's actually very, yeah, 15 million. So tiny. Million. There's be more Apple Watches sold. More Fitbits are sold, I think. Uh, there's, I don't know, I don't know the Apple Watch. Apple Watch, I think it's going to be 20 million, 30 million. Okay, so yeah, 15 million. Last year, but the growth is huge. La 2014 was seven and a half million. Okay, so it's doubling. It's doubling, and 2016 forecast is 23 million. Right. I think it's going to go even faster because I think what's going to happen is people are going to realize how easy these are to set up mm -hmm. and then how much more protection mm -hmm. it provides than, say, even having ADT. Right. Like, I have ADT. I pay 50 bucks a month for this, 60 bucks a month, 70 bucks a month. You know, you start getting into almost mm -hmm. closer to $1,000 a year mm -hmm. and all this installation cost. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, my drop cams right now function better in terms of security for me than armed response. I mean, in, in the case of an armed invasion, I guess the armed response from ADT would be better. But I don't understand why, you know, uh, more people don't have this product because Justin you, from uh, Justin TV fame and mm -hmm. Y Combinator partner now had somebody write like F you, you know, racial slur word for an Asian person on his door, and he caught them on camera writing it, and he just tweeted it. Like, this is massive peace of mind. Oh, wow. You will yeah. catch the people who are doing bad things in the world on these cameras. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. massive peace of mind. I think so. I think part of it, it hasn't grown that fast. People don't know about this. Traditionally, mm. people think about a camera, oh, the point-and-shoot camera that's now built into a smartphone. There's a whole new category. It's a camera that you put somewhere, and then when you're somewhere else, you get to see and hear what's yeah. happening. It's your eyes where you're not. Mm. And I think, it's, I think it's a great thing to have. I, I think this market is like a little bit, if you will, like a featured phone. It's multiple player. It's not going to be one player dominate all. So Google is there. I think Google educating the consumer and this product exists and this category of product exists is good for all of us. How many people do you need to have on a team full time? And you can add up your part time people into like a full time person. Like if you had two half time people, make it one. Mm -hmm. How many full time people does it take to make a world class product like this, assuming that your founder is also technical, which you are. How many people, including yourself, does it take to create a product that's, let's say, you know, whatever, 50% or 100% or 25% better than Dropcam? Let a, leave us somebody else to um, def define what's better. Great question. Um, you did it with how many full-time people? Full-time right now, there's nine of us, nine but part-time and contractor and our contract manufacturing uh, using some... Yeah, so putting that aside, you have some contractors. Somewhere between 15 to 20 people. Wow. Yeah. So it's not cheap. No. Um, no. And where do you get those people from? What are their backgrounds typically when you built the team for this? Yes. And how do you get, you know, people who are working in the hardware business, probably for very established players, mm -hmm. how do you get them to take the jump and join you on this crazy journey when you, by definition right, as a startup, right. have six, 12, 18 months of runway in your bank account? 
Right. Uh, actually, definitely, the, the team makes this product happen. What you see here is a result of an amazing team of nine people that worked, and, and the part-time guys, to work so hard to get it to here. And it's almost unfair. I'm sitting here. They're not here. But they are a big part of making this happen. I could have not done this. Um, so, so how do you convince them? I think, I think uh, it's a combination of, you know, uh, you, it's your passion as a, as a founder and entrepreneur that comes across and how you are dedicated and what the sacrifices you are making. You lead by example and what you're doing. Uh, I try to be the first one in, last one out always, and, and it's a hard work. And, and the good news is being in Silicon Valley and doing this here, there's a lot of people that get it. There's a lot of people that want to be part of this thing. I think, I think if we were doing somewhere else, there's less people that... And they're getting those stock there. options, right? I mean, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's, there's the return reward. There's, the sooner you're coming on board, the more risk you're taking, but the reward is much higher than you join the company after it's 30 employees, right? Let me ask you this. If the company became a billion-dollar company, mm -hmm. how much money would those early investors get on average? If we took the median, yeah. you know, so a billion dollars is pretty easy. One percentage point would be $10 million. Yeah. Those not early employees. What would they expect to make if it became a billion-dollar company like, say, Dropcam, a five, which you know, would have been a billion-dollar company if they kept going. Right, it was right. a $500 billion yeah, sale, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, 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 like, let's say the first 10, 10 employees. Uh, easily, in it's it's above ten million. So yeah. Let's so they're about, point or better. Oh yeah, easily. Some easily, guys, yeah. some guys or gals might get two or three points. Easily, yeah. yeah. So these guy, these guys and gals could be worth twenty or thirty million dollars. Even higher. If yeah. they even higher, if they if they take the time to stick it out at a below market rate salary. Exactly. They're making half of what they could make if they went to work for a Google or a Facebook. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around that time. Yeah, yeah two thirds. Yeah, two thirds. Yeah, if you go for work for Apple or Google, yeah, yeah. You just kind. Of, but the upside is is exactly there. Is it, isn't risk. it more exciting though, also for them to be in a room with only nine other people working on the future, on a small team? It's more fun, isn't it? When you left Texas Instrument, it's more. It's more. This is more work than being at Texas Instruments, but is it more fun? It's a lot more fun. I mean, it's it's definitely a lot more work, but I mean, I love it, and and I am. Uh, I think the team, the team, the same way. They're so passionate because you get to uh, you get to make all the decisions and you get to see the product you touched becomes. Bec I mean, there is like one hardware guy, our head of hardware engineering, that made this thing happen. And that's his work. If you work as a hardware engineer at Apple, you probably did one little, very tiny little work on a tiny part of the the, the thing, and it's such a big thing. And, and if you go try to outside of your box in a corporate yeah. world, they give you a little box and you kind of get your hands a slap. You got to come back to your box. So you can't be as much creative. And you can be, sometimes you're a lot, things are moving very slow because of processes that corporate needs. We move much faster. So I, the guys okay. like it, yeah. I mean, nobody's required let's, uh, to stay. Let's take a moment to look at the video uh, that's part of the Indiegogo Go campaign. What do these videos typically cost to make mm -hmm. on a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo? When we get back, I want you to tell me what it costs typically. Okay. And then what you pay when we get back. Let's, uh, let's all watch this video here. It's a two minute video and about the product. When you're away, it's easier to live in the moment knowing that everything is okay at home. What if you had the power to always know for sure? Butterfly is a leap forward for the connected home. It's more than a next generation security camera. It's a whole new way to experience and interact with your home. Inside Butterfly is a technology to know what's going on around it. But at the heart of Butterfly is something unlike any other home security camera a powerful computer that learns and makes decisions based on what it sees and hears. That way, it only records when there's something going on that you need to see. It can learn the unique rhythm of your home and realize when something is out of the ordinary. It can also detect familiar faces and tell the difference between humans and pets. Butterfly becomes an extension of you, able to know what's normal and what's not. That way, you only get alerts when it really matters. With the tap of a finger, you're instantly in two places at once. The Butterfly app is a portal into your home when you're away and sorts the moments into an interactive timeline that's like a curated news feed of what you missed when you were gone. Butterfly was designed to look like a natural and elegant part of your home. And it's wire-free, so it can be placed where you need it, instead of where your power outlets are. Traditional home security systems are just not practical. They're expensive, complicated to set up, and difficult to use. So we reimagined what a security camera could be, and then set out to make it. Our team 
has been developing Butterfly for the past two years, building a powerful device that's reliable and easy to use right out of the box. Whether using it to protect your family, pets, or property, Butterfly keeps you in touch and helps keep them safe. We're excited to share this new technology with you. Join us in bringing simple home security to everyone. Be one of the first to experience Butterfly and a whole new way of connecting with your home and loved ones. That is incredibly well done. Congratulations, thank Ben, and you're you. great. You've become a great presenter. Am I? Thank you. Yeah, thank really you. well done. I mean, it looks like a real television commercial. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, looks yeah. like something that previously would cost a quarter million dollars to make. Uh -huh. But today, with all this great new talk about like a technical revolution, all these new DSLRs and red cameras and everything that people are mm -hmm. shooting these commercials with, what is the budget for a commercial like that? What does the typical company spend on a Kickstarter or Indiegogo commercial of that production level, which I think is... That you'd say that is the as good as it gets, pretty much. Thank you. We think so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so is that fifty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, and then what did you spend on it? Um, I, I've I've got when we went shopping this around, I got different quotes, and I tried multiple different agencies. We've got ranges from like ten thousand dollar range all mm -hmm. the way to hundred thousand dollar range. Got it. This specific video and a couple of other uh, additional featured video that we'll release throughout the next few weeks. We got them all done. A very good budget, around 20, 20 to 25. Yeah, 20 to 22,000 dollars. Really Great. good. Yeah, yeah. So about 20, 25 grand to do, 22 grand to do something like this with a little additional videos. Mm -hmm. So let's just call that 20K. Mm -hmm. What else goes into a successful Indiegogo campaign or Kickstarter campaign? You chose Indiegogo today. Yep. And we'll get into why. What else do you have to spend? I heard you have to hire a PR agency, That's right. a marketing agency. Yes. Is, do you have to do that, or is it just uh, recommended? And what are those costs? Yeah, so we did, we did the PR agency. So okay. we didn't do the marketing agency. We did the PR. And I think, yes, you do. Consumer electronic, there's so much noise on this platform. These platforms, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, are awesome, but there's so much noise, and so many new companies are coming out every day, or so many new projects are being out there. So to rise above the noise, I think you need you need um, you need PR agency to help you that. Now it's not rocket science. You can get a hold of different editors and different journalists to talk to, but I think what's What's most important in a startup is the time. And since nobody in the founding team and the guys around me, they're all product engineer design team, we were not PR background or journalist background team. So we thought this is for us to try to do it on our own. It's a massive distraction and time sink. Yep. Let's go hire the professional with the professional So how many contacts. months do you need to have them working in advance and then during mm -hmm. and after? So what's the total commitment, and then what is the cost per month? They typically, they do, uh, the, what I heard around is a three months con uh, uh, the three months deal, so we did a three months uh, deal with them, and they usually get on board around six, seven weeks before the launch date. So we start to help you with the, with the pitch and the messaging. They, they do get involved in the messaging for the video, but really our videographer team was awesome, and they had done this state. You just work with somebody that has the experience, you know? Right. <coughs> so you have so to know your value proposition, and the PR firm can help you with, hey, what's really going to... Yeah. Yeah. What are the people at Engadget or The Verge or Gizmodo or The New York Times or Wall Street Journal? What's Walt Mossberg or Peter Rojas going to think of this? Think of this, exactly, and give you the feedback. And they have the direct contact to those guys, and they can they have a relationship that's been established. So I highly recommend doing a PR. What does it cost, three months? About $10,000 a month. Okay, so on thirty average, grand. They're, they're more they're more expensive one. They're they're a little bit cheaper ones, too. I yep. think an average is around 10000 So about fifty k between the video and the PR... <clears throat> Um, to launch at Indiegogo, mm -hmm. um, and then you have to give 5%. Is that the fee? That's the fee with the credit card processing and all that to use Indiegogo. What do, you hope to, uh, what do you hope to raise in your Kickstarter? Is there a goal? And then what do you... Because the goal here... Actually, I see the goal is 100000 yes. It's 100000 Which it's, is not a lot, let's be honest. I think yes. you're sandbagging there, right? No, How many, no, no, no. Not sandbagging what is that, 400 there. orders? <coughs> uh, that's 500 orders at 200 That's right, that's right. So the, the 300 orders that you mentioned earlier is for the one unit. Then we have triple pack units. We have some other perks that people Got don't want to buy. So total would be 500 of single cameras. Um, no, so the 100K is the money we need. So the way we did the Kickstarter, obviously, we raised money from Angel Investor like yourself. We built the company. We got the product finished to manufacturing point. Mm. Now we're literally three months away from shipping the product. Ah, so you're doing this right before shipping. Right before shipping. Is this the new way to do an Indiegogo Kickstarter? Because I, I thought you basically way. put out the video and you put up mock-ups in a 3D printed version, uh -huh. and then you got the money and then you built it. 
That's the typical, that's that's common way of doing it. I didn't want to, so what happens, yeah, so a lot of people do, do it like that, and usually they promise nine months to a year out, uh -huh. but that's, with the hardware, it's impossible to make that promise. Even the Apple and the Samsung of the world don't make that promise of, I'm gonna deliver iPhone 7, a year from now. They're going to deliver when it's ready, right? So um, so I personally have been a victim of a couple of these. I've been backed multiple projects, and multiple times they've been delayed hmm. because nine months, a year ahead of time, it went in for, uh, ahead of a, uh, It was always delayed. They've always the been delayed, and this is why Indiegogo and Kickstarter have gotten a black eye, I would say. And exactly. And people are a bit a little critical of like, hey, we're, we're in year two. I don't know how long Coin took, but Coin was one of the big ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's been a couple of big black eyes. What are the big problem ch children been for these hardware projects? There, there's been a few different ones. Coin was one. I think uh, Ouya was another one that Ouya, was doing, yeah. that was doing the, the video um, game gaming. thing that actually now has gone away, but that was... I they sold it, still. yeah. Oculus the, was the big success. Yes, Oculus was a big success. Um, there was another one that was Instabox, Instacube thing that uh. was doing pictures, their Instagram to his picture. That was way delayed multiple times. Um, so it's common. It's uh, hardware is hard. Hardware is hard, yes. Especially when the people who are starting it have no background in hardware. That's what I've learned. Right. Like, you know, I, after meeting you, you know, I've only been like, you know what, if, if you don't have somebody on the team like Ben, um, why would I even consider this? Because... You know, and this is why I would encourage people who are at big companies with 10 years experience in hardware to think about, hey, if you should join these teams that are starting new hardware startups. And the people who are starting these startups, they have to have a co-founder who has done it for a decade because mm -hmm. it's really, really hard. Hey, we're wrapping up on time here. Show us a quick demo of the product. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's pull up the product here. Yes. So I want to show you guys two two quick demos. So we have we have the app on the screen. Yeah, I so, see it. So I want to walk you guys through two versions of the app. We talked about ABR and the differentiation be, uh, intelligence. I want to see what it means to the customer, what it means to the consumer. So I'm going to log in here. Okay. Um, so what? So this is, is the user interface is all about simplicity. So this is was a little bit inspired by Facebook news feed. We call it sure. the video news feed. On the top most present time, this is the office camera, is a screenshot of the last time the camera was live. And if I press the button there, it will go and fetch the live video camera, uh, live video from the camera. On the bottom is where we move away from this 24 hours recording. And what it is, is this activity based uh, of whenever the events happen. And using some icons, so the icons on the first one is the face was detected and next to it was emotion. The second one down is a sound. And it goes down and down. And those, those um, uh, those uh, thumbnails can become animated GIFs to yeah. give you a glance like this what happened in the kids room for the yeah. entire day and and you can have multiple cameras, you can share cameras, and changing between them is as simple as you swiping left and right, Got and it. you can go and stream the video on this one. So this one, you can, oh, so if I click on the, on the video click, it will go and, so this is now fetching the video from our cloud. This is, a, this, is a hist this is an older video of somebody came into the house, and it shows the human was detected, motion was detected. Further down, it has a pet detect. So, and those algorithms actually can get better over time. And we build this a little bit like Tesla, that you can over the air upgrade this, so, mm -hmm. so we sell it, or we do, we're actually, I think of ourselves as a software company that's doing some hardware connected devices. And we will do a new hardware every 12 to 18 months, but we will have new software releases every quarterly, three to six months, let's say. And these will be pushed over the air, so your device, your analytics will get better and better over time. Cool. Well, the Indiegogo page looks great. By the way, if you want to use my name on the Indiegogo page, you're welcome to uh, use me. I always like to, I, you know, I was getting like some publication that, not a lot of people read anymore is like giving uh, me a hard time about promoting my startups. Like, what do you think yeah. an angel <laughs> investor is supposed to do in the market? My job is to promote the companies out there. My job is to say, buy this product, try this product. And I do say to people who are, you know, investors, mm -hmm. go meet with my founders, hear their story, and yeah, consider them for investment because I've already invested. Absolutely consider them for investment. And by the way, they're all going to be losing money if I'm investing in them. They're angel, I'm angel investing. They're all nascent. Mm. So by definition, Dear. my job is to tell VCs to consider the companies I'm investing in. And in fact, they come to me, VCs come to me on a regular basis and say, what are you investing in? Because they know I'm an early stage first check investor. Yep. 
not to like go on a little bit of a rant here. No, no, actually, I, you've been amazing investors. So thank you for all your support. You've oh, been very, very helpful. You. I highly recommend to all the other founders that are looking to find amazing angel investors. But don't come to me for immediate introduction either. So just Well, I mean, uh, the way I feel about it is introductions to founders is a really important part yes. of the ecosystem, which is to say, you know, if somebody meets with you, I always tell you the same thing. Is it world class? Would you invest in it? Would you join the board of it? Whatever filter you want to put on it. Yes. And then if yes, definitely do an email intro and don't even ask me because uh, I rely on my founder's judgment. And then I say, and if it's not, you should tell the person candidly, like, this is when I would approach Jason. He's a design guy. He's going to look at your design and say it's a five. Mm -hmm. You need to get it to like a seven before you go to him. Or I don't think that you have a good business model. You should really have your business model tightened up something, right? Right. You should give them advice as to what you learned interacting mm -hmm. with me, you know, as, a, as an angel. Listen, it's been a Absolutely. pleasure. Yes. Jason, oh, can I quickly show? One show? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, another part of the demo. So, so you can see it on the screen here. So I went. Oh, okay, there's me. Yeah. So there's a, there's a live camera here. Yep. It's not connected to anything. Look how I'm smooth. moving it around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not plugged yep. in. And it's not final yet. Obviously, we still need some bugs to figure out. But, yeah. but you're in there. This is the studio. I can turn it around to myself. It's, right. It's, it has a less than so a second. That way, it's like a GoPro camera. So it's it's you could you could move it around. I mean, it's a yeah. big GoPro camera. You're not going to put it on the end of a surfboard. Yeah. But you could take this into a meeting. Yeah. Out of your bag, record the meeting, and then distribute it to everybody. Yes. So let me take ten seconds to talk about a new application that okay. our customers have come talked about about us. People are asking about can you make a mount for this for a car dash cam use Of case. course. And why is that, that more attractive than putting a GoPro or putting a, a traditional dash cam? The traditional dash cam, you have to plug into the cigarette lighter for the power. Yeah. That one already used for their phone. You got to put in your Wi-Fi, you got to connect it, all yeah, this stuff. Of, take well, the chip GoPro, out. Well, GoPro, you have to take the memory out, take it yeah. home, and put it into your computer. This one, you pull into the garage, a driveway, assuming your driveway has Wi-Fi, it will sync everything. And then right. you're driving around, it has an accelerometer, it knows what when you're going, when you're slowing down, and it will record that. Yeah. And, uh, and then when you sync into the garage, every Everything gets synced up to the cloud and it's on your app. And since it's portable, if you uh, want to go charge it, you take it out. Or if you're parked in the street or you have a valet, you can just put it in your bag or pocket. Exactly. Yes. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Listen, Ben, um, super great to be in business with you. And I'm really Thank impressed you. with what you've done. Thank Highly you. recommend everybody take a look and consider buying one. And if you're a super fan of the show, listen, it's 200 bucks. I mean, it's not a lot of money. If you're making minimum wage in any major city, it's like you know going to be 15 yes. hours of work. Yes. Give so, it a shot, support them, yes. buy one. So, so we've got the company. You know, we've, we're three months away from shipping. We thought this was the perfect time now to come to the early adopter yeah. community, Indiegogo, Kickstarter community, people, yeah. and to, uh, help us to get it to the finish line and get their feedback on the on this. Yes. Are we doing the right thing on the software? Let's say the flow of that app that I just showed mm -hmm. you. We could do better things. We have different ideas. So this early early adopter community will get a discount on. On purchase of this price, uh, on, a per on purchasing this product versus the retail, as well as they will be part of that beta community that will give us feedback. So we we love to have their support and the early adopter tech community. We love to, would love them to be part of this yep. our campaign. From getting your bicycle stolen because you don't have a camera in your garage, the to origin starting this, story, yeah. to starting it, to raising the money, and now Indiegogo. And thanks to my friends at Indie Indiegogo has been tremendously supportive of you. I have to thank my friends over at Indiegogo. Yes. Because yes. everybody says go with Kickstarter. That's the number one. But you chose Indiegogo. Why? Uh, we talked to both. I would say both are, are helpful. I think we could have gone wrong either way. Indiegogo, just because we're San Francisco based, Indiegogo is San Francisco based, we just, there was more interaction, there was more talk, and there was more support. Gave you a little more attention. Uh, they gave us a lot more attention. Yeah, gave us, gave us more attention, yes. So we okay. ended up engaging with them. But it was more. a tough decision? It was a tough decision, yeah, yeah. yeah because I both think both worked. platforms, I think both platforms work. Most important is right marketing messaging with your video okay. and the PR. There you have it, folks. All right. Uh, thanks, Ben, and everybody go to Butter. Uh, everybody go to Indiegogo and check out the Butterfly camera, and everybody go to getbutterfly.com. That's get butter b u t t e r f l e y e. So it's butterfly, but with an e y e at the end. Get butterfly. Follow Ben Nader on the Twitter. He's Ben Nader n a d e r underscore. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Somebody's got to get you that. Uh, Somebody, oh, Adam Bain or Jack or somebody, help him out. Get him the Ben Nader. Please. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm an investor, full disclosure. I uh, am not generally soliciting when I tell people I love the companies I'm investing in. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm a fan of startups. Guilty as charged. Yes. I'm enthusiastic. I, am, I introduce venture capital friends of mine to other angel investors. And, and to each other, and we all work collaboratively to try to build companies knowing that 80% fail. Yes, that's how the industry works and has always worked. Insanity. It's insane I have to even deal with this.
crazy. And from friends, or people who used to be friends of mine. Oh, wow. Really? Used to be friends of mine. Used to be on the show. And then they're just like relentlessly criticizing me for supporting founders. Up And yes, I will support a founder until the, not, not only will I support a founder until the company goes out of business, I will support them after the company has gone out of business. Josh Williams, go while I invest in his next company. I'll invest in his next company. I'll invest in his next company. I love Josh Williams. That's my job. When you go to your next company, I'll invest you in there again. Thank if you, you work hard and you execute well, like of course I'm going to keep investing in those people. And of course I'm going to fight to the end to try to save a company if you're criticizing me about Zirtual. Like, you know, and even if they make mistakes, startups make mistakes, it happens. Guess what? Anybody who's an angel investor, they've already signed up to lose 80% of their deals. Mm -hmm. That's sense. the way it works. If you go to Vegas and you're a high stakes poker player mm -hmm. and you flop a set of aces, you can fully expect that 20, 30, 40% of the time, somebody might hit their flush or straight if you're in a three-way pot or four-way pot. These things happen in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Totally, totally. Unbelievable. Sorry, I have to go on a mini rant. All no, right, no, no. thank That's you, good. Jackie and everybody. And we'll see you next time on This Week in Startups. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.